And welcome, friends, to the bright side. I am pharmacist Ben. Thank you for being here. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to jump on board and talk about anything due to do with health or nutrition or prescription drugs or nutritional supplements or skin health or anything we're talking about here today, we have a guest coming up at the bottom of the hour, Joyce Keller has been on the Oprah Winfrey show. She's been on Coast to Coast. She has a podcast. She's got multiple books, and she has been vo- was voted one of the top 100 psychics in America by Simon & Schuster. She's uh, a uh, well-known author of a uh, whole bunch of books, 10 different books, Seven Steps to have Heaven, How to Communicate with Those We've Loved and Lost. I personally am fascinated and have been very fascinated lately about the whole thing, the whole idea of near-death experience. Experience. I've always been fascinated with near-death experiences, and I've talked about it a little bit. I haven't talked about it a lot, but it's, uh, I personally personally believe that our fear of death, and we had Sonia Barrett on coming a, while, uh, a couple months ago talking about this idea of how we're responding to all the stuff that's going on in the news today with really um, fear of death at the core. And that's kind of an interesting idea uh, because nobody ever thinks about that. I mean, really, why are we all panicked? Not we all, of course, present company excluded, but culturally panicked about a viral infection is because we have this underlying fear of death. The best way to get over your fear of death is by understanding or at least paying attention to, listening to the near-death experience or people have had, uh, ex- had near-death experiences, and there's lots of them. I read a book when I was in uh, high school called, actually, in, uh, well, in, I was in ninth grade, called Life uh, After Life. And this book, uh, Life After Life, actually, I'm not sure, I read it sometime, sometime in my teenage years, we'll say. Uh, Life After Life, and it was uh, really a very amazing book to me, because I'd never heard of this thing called near-death experiences. This was probably 1976, 77, I'm thinking, somewhere in there, in the mid-70s. And uh, now, they're everywhere. You go on YouTube. And there's thousands of them. There's actually something called Near-Death Experience Radio, which is a podcast of just all about people who've had near-death experiences. They're extremely common, and they're well-known, and there's hundreds, if not thousands, of different scientific papers about them. Uh, And it's pretty, you know, it's becoming part of the cultural mindset. At least accept, at least uh, beginning to become accepted. It's still kind of weird when you think about it. And in my humble opinion, it's the most important thing to understand is how this whole, how we relate, how we connect to death in an unconscious way and subconscious way. And when you start to feel comfortable with it, which is what near-death experiences do, they make you feel really, you know, excited. It's, they're so amazing. They're absolutely amazing. If you haven't gone on, you don't know what I'm talking about. I know most of you probably do. But for those of you who don't, just go on YouTube. And Google near, uh, YouTube search for near-death experiences. Google near-death experiences. It's just amazing the things people say. Anyway, Joyce is going to talk to us. Uh, Calling All Angels is one of her books. She also does numerology, and we'll have a good conversation with Joyce at the bottom of the hour. And we'll get to your calls uh, in, our, uh, in our next segment, 844-236-6010. All right, so we've been talking about this really cool distinction that you know nobody ever talks about, unfortunately. Uh, between water and fat. I'm not going to belabor it too much, but it is, you know, it's really important when you talk, uh, it's really important. I'm not, you know, it's it's very, we're going to understand how to take advantage of our nutrition and understand how to keep ourselves healthy. We've got to understand that distinction. The fact that water has a pulling power, water soluble nutrients, things that dissolve in water, we call them water soluble. They dissolve in water versus things that dissolve in oil. They dissolve, um, you know, butter dissolves in oil. Um, uh, mineral oil dissolves in oil. Uh, let's see what else dissolves in oil. Margarine dissolves in oil. You know, certain things dissolve in oil. Other things dissolve in water, salt, sugar. You know, we all kind of intuitively know what this is, but it's a real important scientific distinction. Water soluble versus fat soluble. Water soluble has a pulling power. Fat soluble sticks. Fatty stuff stores. Fatty stuff is static. Has a is relatively nothing static, of course. It's relatively static, and that makes fatty things good barriers, good walls. And so, whenever the body the body is obviously made up of compartments, different parts, those parts are kept separate by walls, barriers, fats. Fats keep our organs all in one piece. Guess what happens when we age and die? We become blobby. All the one pieces, the distinctions start to blob. 
That's what basically we blobify with age. That's what happens as we get older. And what that is, it's a be- the beginnings of the breakdown of the ba- fatty barriers. That's why fats are anti-aging. That's why fats are so important to understand. Fat absorption is so important to, to uh, um, uh, take advantage of, leverage, and correct if there's any problems if you want to anti-age. That's why I can tell when somebody has a fat problem by looking at them. There's a certain blobbiness they have to them. And I'm not talking fat, by the way. I'm talking about a lack of shape. So when I say blobby, I mean we lose our shape. The shape is maintained by the fats. And when we age, in many ways, it's a fat problem. And I'm not talking about too much or too little. I'm talking about the wrong kinds in the wrong places. So these fats form barriers. We can call the barriers membranes. Whenever you hear the word membrane, it's all it is. It's a barrier. The body is 70% water. You've got to have membranes. You've got to have barriers. If you don't have membranes and barriers, you just dissolve. Right? If you're, I mean, this should be kind of obvious. The barriers uh, act as, as, water, as water barriers. They're fat-soluble. They reject water. Things that are fat-soluble, oil and water don't mix. That's a fundamental rule of chemistry. Oil and water don't mix. They push, up, they push apart from each other. Just in your mind's eye. Think of them pushing, pushing apart from each other, and that's where you get barriers. And that's where you get distinctions in organs. Guess what? When you die, and I used to make, I had a, when I had my compounding pharmacy, I made a special cream for people who were in hospice who were in their last 72 hours or so. Because the last 72 hours, guess what happens? You, you, all your fluids start to come out. Your membranes completely dissolve. They're always, they're gradually dissolving with age as we get older, but when we're dying, it, the process is accelerated, and it's, it's, you're, it's like a snowball going down, down a mountain. You know, it starts off small, but by the time we're in our last 72 hours, if you're, if you're lucky enough to live to an old age, your, uh, your body is deteriorating to a point where this is like the snowball at the bottom of the mountain, and you, your fluids just completely leak out, and it's very uncomfortable, and it it's actually makes a sound called the death rattle. That's, ta- that's literally what it's called, the death rattle. That's what doctors call it. And I used to make a cream that would dry, dry up those liquids. It was called uh, scopolamine. It's a, actually, now they have it in a patch for the death rattle. Back then, we had to make creams for it. Anyway, point being that the fats keep everything intact. However, it's not like the fats are just pure barriers. They're said to be semi-permeable that means they have little holes in them, little pores in them. And the, the interaction between the membrane and the pores inside of it is a major factor in the health of a cell. And guess what? Guess what? Those pores are made up of protein. And it's the combination of protein and fats that gives the cell membrane a semi-permeability. We'll finish when we come back from our break. Take your phone calls. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back on the bright side right after this. On the bright side, 844 uh, uh, is our number. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. And um, if you just have a comment you'd like to uh, share with us, 844 about anything we're talking about here today. We've got uh, Joyce Keller coming up at the bottom of the hour. Joyce is one of uh, the country's top 100 psychics according to Simon and Schuster magazine. We'll talk to Joyce uh, specifically. I want to talk to her about her, her books, her near death experience books, seven steps to heaven, how to communicate with those we've loved and lost. So we were, before we went to break, we were talking about this distinction between uh, fats and water in the cell membrane, the fats, fat and water distinction shows up a couple of ways. It's mostly fat, but not all fat. And that's because you don't want a total barrier. You want to have a semi-permeable barrier that allows some things in. And so that's why you have to have these various portal portals to the inside. And the portals are created by uh, water, which is separated out from the fat, microscopically speaking. So you get these little openings in, in the cell. These, uh, there's, th- these watery substances are protein. 
And this is one of the reasons, among many, of course, why making sure you're getting enough protein, especially amino acids, in terms of uh, all your amino acids. If you're just getting your protein from steak, that's not going to get you all your amino acids. Likewise, vegetarians are going to be missing some amino acids. You've got to have all your amino acids. The, the best foods, by the way, for all your amino acids are eggs and dairy, interestingly. Now, there are some grains, uh, I'm sorry, there's some beans that have, especially soy, also pea, legumes, we'll say, legumes like soy and pea. Legumes are a cheap form of protein, but they're missing certain amino acids. The best way to get your amino acids if you're not going to eat eggs, uh, if you can't eat eggs, eggs are the best, but if you can't eat eggs or dairy, uh, dairy is a little problematic, of course, um, then the best, what you have to do is you have to start mixing things up. You have to have mixed sources of protein from beans and from uh, meat if you're a meat eater, or fish if you're, if you're eating fish. Um, vegetables, of course, have protein. That's really amino acids. That's really important to recognize. Vegetables have amino acids in them. So you can still get aminos from vegetables, just a little bit harder because they don't have a lot of them. They have less of them. They're mostly water and, and, and phytonutrients and fiber and such. So so uh, making sure you're getting a, uh, mixing your, your proteins is, is very important. So you get all of the different amino acids. And getting amino acids straight is also a good idea. In my humble opinion, there are certain amino acids like taurine and arginine, which can be very helpful if you take them individually. Taurine in particular for the heart and for the brain. And arginine for pretty much everything. Arginine is super amino acid. So there's a couple of, you know, glutamine is another one, uh, which is very important for the detoxification system. So uh, make sure you're getting enough protein, making sure you're getting enough uh, uh, these uh, uh, fats, good fats, especially essential fatty acid fats, which go into making the cell membrane, essential fatty acid fats. And then also uh, things like lecithin. They're called these, these compounds that are like lecithin are called phospholipids. Lecithin is a bunch of different phospholipids. Phospholipids, lipids means fats, of course. Phospho, it means it has a little piece of phosphorus stuck to it. And you know what that's about? We've talked about that. Actually, we haven't talked about it for a little bit, but we, were, we have talked about it in the past. Phosphorus is super energetic, Super duper energetic. You, they make fireworks out of phosphorus. Phosphorus means the light bearer. And phosphorus, uh, whenever you have something that's got that kind of potency and that kind of energy, uh, it's going to go into water pretty effectively. And phosphorus gives fats a certain water solubility. And that's the key right there. It's the lecithin. Uh, and also, to a certain extent, uh, the cholesterol, which is uh, in the skin, that gives the skin its, its flexibility. And its ability, I'm sorry, the cell, the, its flexibility. And also the skin, by the way. Everything we're talking about with the cell is true about the skin. Because the skin is a membrane. So if you want to have beautiful skin, do phospholipids, lecithin, essential fatty acids. In fact, everything you do, amino acids, everything you do for a cell membrane, you're going to do for your skin. The skin is a macroscopic version of the cell membrane. So for you guys who want, want to have beautiful skin, make sure you take care of the cell, doing everything that the cell needs especially the cell membrane, the skin cell membrane. And, oh, by the way, communications occur at this level of the membrane. You've got 100 trillion cells in the body, and they're all talking to each other. They're communicating to each other. And what they're saying to each other, this is so cool what they're saying to each other, is basically grow or don't grow. That's basically what cells say to each other. Now, there's some, there's some specifics that are involved what to grow and, and what not to grow, but generally they're turning things on or turning things off. If cells do not communicate at the level of the membrane, what I'm going to say now is really important. If cells do not communicate at the level of the membrane effectively, disease results, especially cancer. But all diseases have an element of cells not communicating at the level of, of the membrane, membrane dysfunction, membranes that don't have fats, people who are not digesting their fats, people who are not intaking their fats. You see where I'm going here? By not intaking fats or not uh, absorbing your fats, not getting them in your diet, correct fats, I'll tell you what I mean here in a sec, by correct fats, by not getting any, or by having a malabsorption issue, you're depriving your cells of the ability to, you're depriving your body of the ability to make good cells, and you're depriving your body, uh, the cells, of the ability to talk to each other, 
And this is where diseases result, especially out of growth diseases and all, all diseases, uh, out of control growth diseases and all diseases have an element of out of control growth. And the classic example of out of control growth is cancer. And the classic example of a membrane disease, not a genetic disease, folks, not a DNA disease. Yes, there's DNA involved, but it's a really a membrane issue, fat issue. Anything you to, can do to protect your fats or to intake fats or to make sure you're absorbing your fats is not only going to keep you from aging, it's going to keep you from getting diseases, especially cancer. So if that's not a good reason to get on your ultimate EFAs and make sure you're getting enough fatty vitamins and make sure you're uh, getting your, uh, uh, your uh, fatty minerals, I don't know what, and phytonutrients, which are fatty, I don't know what is. That means in addition to taking your fats... That means also helping your body absorb your fats. And you want to do number, and this is for you folks that are interested in having beautiful skin. It's all true about the skin too. Focus on the fats. I can always tell when somebody's got a fat problem by looking at the skin. If it's uh, if it's a, not a significant or dramatic one, the, the skin will be very. It'll be thin. It'll be aging. It'll be dry. If this if it is a dramatic one, it'll be eczematic, or you'll have psoriasis. Or you'll have sensitive skin. I love hearing that. Every, almost every, it's almost like a badge of honor to have sensitive skin. No, and it's not a skin issue either. It's not a badge of honor, and it's not a skin issue. It's a problem with fats, among other things, but usually the fats are the most important thing. In fact, and I know we talked about this a couple weeks ago, if you can't use retinoic acid or retinol or something aggressive on your skin, you probably have a fat malabsorption issue or a fat intake issue, or you have some kind of fat issue. And when I say fat, I hope you guys know, and I'm sure you do, I'm not talking about just fat like on your gut. I'm talking about the chemical, the molecule, the molecular substance that's called fat. All right, Joyce Keller coming up in our next segment. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Side. I am Pharmacist Ben, and thanks for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, and 24-7 on the archive page at benfuchsarchives.com. Also, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, my blog, and criticalhealthnews.com for videos and news stories. We have uh, the longevity products on all the sites and a Join the Team link that you can click on if you want to sign up to join the Brightside Ben team. And don't forget to take a look at our True Skin Health products, all formulated in my compounding pharmacy for wound healing. And wound healing is beauty. And if you don't believe me, go to truthreviewed.com and check out our now 900-plus four- and five-star reviews, no preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, silicon water, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products, truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, I am looking forward to speaking to our next guest. She's been on Coast to Coast with George Norrie and uh, even Oprah Winfrey has multiple books and she was voted one of the top 100 psychics in America by Simon and Schuster magazine. And she's also a prolific author and a very beautiful lady as well. Please welcome to the bright side, Joyce Keller. Hey, Joyce. Ben Fuchs. I'm so thrilled. I'll tell you why. Yeah. Thank you for the introduction. I'm, you know, we're both on coast to coast, but when you are on coast to coast, it's the best. I, I told <laughs> George Nuri this. I said, when you have pharmacists been on, Everything stops. It's the most important segment that he has on ever. Wow. So, as a choice. You know, as, and I have choice. to say, seriously. No, no, no that's me melt, you're, you're melting me here, Joyce, because let me tell you something. It takes one to know one. So if you got that, <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? No. I know you know it. I know you know exactly what I'm saying. So, then I have to tell you. Thank you. My dad was a pharmacist also. So I'm is that right? In. Yeah, you are a natural pharmacist. He was an early, early one, also he the was old early. time. Yeah, but, but the thing is, he was in Brooklyn, about a couple of blocks away from where Dr. Fauci's dad was a pharmacist, oh, also. Wow. So you know, I knew about the whole Fauci thing and my dad's pharmacy, and I love when you're on coast to coast or on your own show because you bring truth and understanding that people do not Praise hear God. anywhere else. So thank yeah. you. 
Thank you. No, that really just melts me when you say that. So, but you just, it's very interesting that you brought up COVID because I want I want to bring it up. What is the psychic way? What is the highest way? To me, being psychic is about accessing higher frequencies. And by higher, I mean faster frequencies, more abstract, lighter. I know you know what I'm talking about. What is that way, uh, that perspective that, uh, to help, that would best allow us to handle all the incredible sturm und drang and fear and anxiety and all the stuff that's going on in the world today? Okay, well, the obvious answer is prayer and meditation, but no one really knows what meditation is. It's simply a stilling of the mind and allowing cosmic energy to come in. Ben, the whole problem on the planet right now is that we're stuck in the third dimension of drugs and alcohol mm. and you know, things that you know God would wish us to move to the side so we can move forward. This mm. has been your message and mine for a long time. So the first thing is get rid of the destructive substances that people are used to using. Don't be so involved with drugs that, you know, you have a headache, you want to get a drug. Mm. Try, you know, your question, I believe, is what is the natural way? I would say sunshine, vitamin mm. D, vitamin C. Mm. Make sure your body is absorbing it. Uh, see what's really, listen to your body. Everything you need to know will be there. And the people who are becoming victims of covid Maybe people who have underlying conditions, for the most part. Do you, do you believe that that's correct? I mean, that's what uh, I'm 100% feeling. correct. 100% correct. The virus is opportunistic, and that means yes. it waits for opportunities. All viruses are opportunistic. They exist where there's toxicity. They exist where there is duress. In fact, there are people who believe that they're either a sign, they're a manifestation of duress, or a protective mechanism. They actually enter into the DNA to help the cells adapt or at least move forward. If it maybe kills the organism, for, in a way, it, it enters into the genetics, so the organism as a whole advances. So there's a lot, you know, our, our genes, are, our genome is maybe 20% or 10% or certain percent viral. From throughout just throughout evolution, so yes, I, I do believe a hundred percent. You know, you're, you're right on as far as uh, comorbidity goes because it's waiting for to be attacked. But there's mental viruses too, right? There's like uh, fear is a virus. Ha, ta, talk to us a little bit about uh, the psychic impact of fear or the psychic nature of fear. Well, thank you. Yes, fear is so easy. It's so easy to go in that place of fear. I do readings all day, and I try to help people, as you do, all the time. And they are in such a place of fear, and justifiably so, because their mother has just passed away, or their you know, relatives, mm. people are dropping away. So there's a real pattern of fear. Okay, what is the answer? There are really uh, two, the, the primary answer to what can you do about fear is go into a place of love and support mm. one another. Try to love one another. Ask yourself, why don't I love this person? All right, they're a little irritating, a little annoying. They're a kind of, uh, a lot of people are thinking that vaccinations are a great idea, as an example. Now, I'm trying to stay in the place of love, not fear. Yeah. But I, I have to admit that a little fear creeps in <laughs> because they are not doing their homework. They yeah. need to know what, now, I have grown children, and I'm going to give myself a little pat on the back because when my children grew up, in the 60s, uh, mm -hmm. people thought that vaccinations were a great idea. But I went to the mass, and I had actual fist fights. <laughs> yes, I'm in good condition. About vaccinations? I, yes, about vaccinations. Wow. I said, you will not vaccinate my children. And that was in the late 60s, the early 70s. Were you considered I, a total nut? Were you considered, like, to be totally off your rocker kind of thing? Yes. I, had, I actually fought with the principal of uh, the school, and I said, you will not touch my children. And what happened was, when uh, my daughter was in kindergarten and I wasn't paying attention, they slipped her a sugar cube with salt vaccine on it oh and embedded into it. So I went crazy, and I said, no, I do not want my children to have it. So she does have that, that one little sugar cube in her system. Now she's all grown up, you know, and she, wow. my children are fine. But uh, I have been fighting about vaccinations for my entire life. And I don't care if people think that I'm a rabble rouser or what they think. Well, let me, ask, because, let me ask you this. Do you think it was because you were psychically in tune to the problems, like the vibration, the frequency, the energy of, the, of what they were sticking in your kid's blood? Yeah, thank you for saying that. That's absolutely half of it. That's only half. The other half is that I do my research. Uh -huh. I'm a great researcher, as you are. 
Yeah. And I realized that it was just, there was no reason to do what they were doing. And certainly now, we're so layered and so complicated and so devious. I, I, have, I have lost oh my so God. many friends. My, devious my is a great word. Yeah, uh, I've lost so many good friends, not to death, but to stupidity, where mm. I said to them, will you be vaccinated? And they said, sure. And that was the end of the relationship. And I wow. hope they're not hearing this because these are people that I love. But yeah. you need to do your homework, Ben. Isn't that the uh, answer? Well, you know, Joyce, just how can anybody think that it's okay to stick things into your blood that you would never even, I wouldn't even use them in my skincare products, mercury and thi- uh, formaldehyde and polysorbates and in, right into your bloodstream and oils, no. right into your bloodstream. It's craziness. I, w- I want to talk to you about, uh, specifically about the near-death experience, because that's something that's near and dear to my heart, and I know you've got some books talking about death, and if that's okay, when we come back from our break. we got Joyce Keller on the bright side. We'll be back right after this. Don't go away. Okay, we are back on the bright side. We're talking to Joyce Keller, one of the top 100 psychics in America, by uh, voted by Ty- Simon and Schuster, and the author of multiple books, including Seven Steps to Heaven: How to Communicate with Those We've Loved and Lost, which I definitely want to talk about, Joyce, with you, because I have a personal fascination with near death and near death experiences and the whole death, the whole idea of death. Before we get into that, how did you find out? I want to know your story personally. How did you get into being a psychic, or how did you find you were psychic, or how did you learn to tap into it, and how to let leverage it and how to help people with it. So tell us a little That's bit about your question. story. Yeah. I, well, I grew up in my dad's pharmacy. <laughs> okay. All right. In Brooklyn. And okay. I wanted to be a pharmacist. And I, oh, wow. This the greatest thing ever. And I loved the way it smelled and what he was doing. He was, he was really like the family doctor. And oh, uh, I was fascinated. And he said, I, I'm going to say one thing to you. First of all, you're annoying because you, you ask so many questions. And the second thing is, all drugs have side effects. Uh, and he said, I want you to remember that one thing. He said, you must take a natural path. So he was oh, way wow. ahead of his time. So what year are we for, talking? What year was this? Well, how advanced well, was he? Is this the 40s, uh, he, 50s? Yeah, it was like the 50s. Uh, yeah. the 40s and 50s. Well, he started his drugstore and probably when Fauci's father started it in the 30s, and it went on for many, many years. It was probably there. Fauci's father was a pharmacist? Was Fauci's father yes. a pharmacist? And his father uh, was a great pharmacist, but Fauci could not pass the pharmacy test, so he became a delivery boy for his, oh, wow. his dad. Oh, and wow. And then someone said, well, maybe you should become a doctor. You and knew him did. when he was a kid? Did you know when he was a kid? No, I did not know him, but I do my homework. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, getting, gotcha. Getting, getting back to, you were asking about near-death experiences, I believe. Yeah, well, I want to know about how you kind of got into, like, like what, did you just have dreams, or did you just have Oh, no, feeling? no, no. My mother, my mother was a great medium. So I had a oh, pharmacist wow. dad and a mother who was a medium. That's I was awesome. really happy. Yeah. That's awesome. And she said, awesome. When, but she said to me, stay out of trouble and don't speak to anyone. Don't tell wow. anyone what we do. Oh, my goodness. So my father's, uh, on one hand, telling me drugs have side effects, but the other hand, my mother's wow. saying, uh, you know, keep no it No wonder why you hated vaccines. No wonder why you grew ahead of the curve <laughs> on all that. You right. were born to of be course. ahead of the curve. You're the leading edge, Gert Joyce. You're the tip of the well, spear. I'm old. <laughs> well, you're still, you're the tip of the spear. I don't know, can't know about all. So, but tell us, okay, so let's, let's know, because we're running out of time, and I want to really hear your take on, on death and what death is about, and what, is, what exactly is death in your, from a psychic death point of view? fabulous. It's fabulous. All people have to do who are afraid of death and who want to know more about it is go to their computer and put in near death experience. I, I was talking about that today. I was just talking about that this morning. Right. A million will come up. People yeah. have had so many uh, side yeah. of the road, yeah. operating room, whatever it yeah. is, and they're all confirmed. Yeah. Uh, a lot of them are um, hokey, but that's okay. Look for the truth, and you'll find the truth there. And I've had a number of near-death experiences myself, and they're glorious. Please mm. don't commit suicide, folks. You have to go at the right time. So uh, I, my telling you that it's a glorious experience 
it does not mean you should rush the experience. Got it. I get it because I've had a near death experience. I know exactly what you mean. And also, I went in the early seven or in the mid seventies. I read Life After Life After Life, Ray Moody's book. I'm sure you know what that is. And that's yeah, the first yeah. time I heard about it. But I've been obsessed with the idea for since since then, since the middle seventies. So tell us what is the, what is the misconceptions? What is the biggest misconception people have about death or about after death? That you're going to be plummeted into hell. That's the first thing. Mm. So, okay, there's no hell as you really, really want it and you expect it. Just oh, let them, you know, let them have a little. But for the most part, uh, there is no hell, uh, and we judge ourselves. There's no God is not going to say, "Look, you, you did this, and you and you did that that you want, and you hurt that person." You will have a life review, and that's really important that people understand mm. that the life review or the panorama shows you every little single thing that you ever did for your entire life. And nothing is left out. You say, oh, my gosh, I, you know, I forgot I sold a candy bar. Uh, all of that is there. And then you have the opportunity of correcting and understanding what, what your deficits were and what your reviews uh, really reveal. So I don't know if that answers your question because I know we're almost out of time. But that's the short form of it. It's the panorama. Mm. It's that you judge yourself, no one is saying to you, you did a bad thing. You know, it's like you understand it yourself. And there's an, I'm sorry, Ben, go ahead. I was going to ask you, I want to hear about your near death experience. Not, not exactly how you had it, how you died, uh, you know, the, the events, but the near death experience itself. The, oh, yeah, the know. first time was at Southampton Lake on Long Island. I was going through a terrible time. I was eight years old, my parents were ill. They were hitting a real crisis point in their lives, and my life was really bad. I was eight, and things were not looking promising. So my sister, who did not know how to swim, said, let's go swimming in Southampton Lake. I'll teach you how to swim. Well, Southampton Lake is a very, very old lake and filled with holes. So we mm. immediately stepped into a hole and started going down and down and down and down, and not being able to swim basically having a death wish, I was happy to cross over. And wow. when I couldn't breathe anymore, I was greeted by a very lovely lady, a very lovely angelic lady. I don't know how far down I had gone at that point, but I hadn't breathed for a long time. And called a hallucination or whatever you wish, but she said to me, look, you can cross over now if you wish, but you have a long life of a lot of work to do. You have oh, wow. a long life. You know, it's a lot of challenges, and she said, you have to make that decision. So I said, well, I really would like to go with you. And she said, no, that's the wrong decision. <laughs> and at that point, <laughs> I found myself being pulled out of the lake. My cousin George realized that my sister and I were drowning, and he pulled us out. But uh, that was my first drowning. My first well, well, hang on, experience. let me ask this. Did you say your husband, George, first of all? No, my cousin George. Oh, your cousin George. Okay, so um, uh, I was going to ask you, uh, how did that change? Because you were eight years old. Obviously, it changed the. Tra I imagine it changed the tra trajectory of your life. Like you yes. saw the world differently. Talk a little bit about that. I started, even though I was only eight years old, I started realizing that things could be turned around. So even though my parents were very ill, I started to think about ways I could help them oh. to feel better. I talked about being obsessed with health and fitness. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, I, I really started to help them, and I'm trying to understand. That began my path of natural healing, wow. and natural holistic living. That was wow. the first time. So then uh, there were other experiences also. You had multiple near-death experiences? Yes, every time I needed one. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's and what awesome. happened... Now, you plug in, you mean you get recharged. It's like that movie Vanilla Sky where Tom Cruise goes, tech support. Did you ever see that? <laughs> Don't you love that exactly. when he goes, isn't that great? Uh, yes. Tech support. <laughs> it's a wonderful movie. Also, um, probably my favorite movie is Defending Your Life. Oh, He's yeah, right that's a good one. Albert Brooks? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and yeah that's a good one. He, yeah, it's really important for people who are afraid of death. You see... Uh, Oh, I forget the uh, Mer Meryl Streep eating spaghetti for the first time in her life. She crosses over and she has left five children. 
and she basically doesn't care. She says they'll be fine, and she's sitting there wow. eating spaghetti because she always was concerned about her weight, but now she didn't have to care anymore. So it's a oh, great movie. It's funny, and it's wise, and it's uplifting. Say the name so again. Defend, defending Your Life. Oh, that's Defending Your Life. That's right, Defending Your Life. I thought she, is, was Meryl Streep in that? Yes. And oh, I don't remember that. Eating, yeah, where she's eating spaghetti at the counter, and she doesn't care that she left all of her children. Behind. Oh, I, I vaguely remember. I saw it so long ago. I do vaguely remember that, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a that yeah. was a great movie. Yeah, I, I find myself really attracted to all that kind of stuff. So YouTube is amazing for all these near death experience stories, it's, isn't it? Don't you find it like? I mean, you you've had your own multiple times, but it seems to me like that's a, that's probably the most powerful message we can share in this time is not to fear death. Do you think? Absolutely. And Ben, the important thing is it's helping to move out of the third mundane yeah. dimension yeah. of going to work every day, not learning yeah. anything, watching television, all of that. So YouTube comes along, thank you, Lord, and yeah. starts teaching us things that we need to learn about new death experiences. Not wow. to be afraid of death, and that we need to grow as human beings and realize how we need to improve. We have to stop hurting each other. We have to love one another. That's my basic message. So. Oh, Joyce, listen, a half hour went by too fast, but I'd love to have you back on. Can, we'll do, can, you, can you stay on the line real quick and when I'm done here, and I'll just t- chat with you a moment? Is that okay? Of course. Farm. Yes. And I love you. Thank you. Oh, I love you too. Thank you so much, Joyce. All right, that was Joyce Keller, one of the top 100 psychics in America, prolific author. She's got a great blog, uh, great blog and also her own podcast, The Joyce Keller Show. And that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. Talk to y'all later. Bye for now.